<laughs> so welcome to the connect show my name is john taylor and uh we are just having a whole bunch of fun here today in the studio and life is pretty good as a result tracy how are you doing today i'm doing pretty good can you see me can you hear me i can see you and i can hear you let me get a thumbs up from kim if we can hear tracy there we go look at that life is great isn't it so we have a little bit of a new <laughs> setup going on here today and after hours and hours of figuring it out it's figured isn't it you think it's like i'm really looking at you i know it's like we're there it's like you're not here but you're there this is so fantastic so with that we could i think we can start things up what do you think oh i i'm ready knock it out okay good morning everyone welcome to the connect show with john and tracy where we join you each week to provide you with the resources to be successful so we're on this journey together and it would be wonderful to hear from you and how we can help you. So please email us at the uh, at ideas at the connect show. And uh, that's a wonderful way that you can contact us. So the and here, here's how that's going to be useful to you. If you have something that you're struggling with, a challenge that you would like to have fixed, you'd like to have an expert talk to you about. Just email us. We'll find an expert on it and we'll do a whole show on it. And if you want, we'll even bring you on and we do a little bit of live coaching. So that sounds like a pretty good deal, doesn't it? Yes, I think so. So if you're off listening, please like and subscribe to our podcast, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebooks. And you're not supposed to see and, me right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and if you are um, out on social media, join us over here in Zoom. Yeah, Zoom is the best place to hang out, be a part of the show, and uh, make sure that you get all of your questions answered. So today our guest are, is Jess and Sorrells, and I think we have a really great show today about organization leadership and how to just move your business be forward better move your business forward better i could almost say that <laughs> and coming up next week we have another exciting new show on organization and courses we'll have melissa etzler who's just starting a new virtual assistant business and Jonathan Heider, and we will all be in the studio. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. When we have the studio, we have you know the whole crew here. Um, uh, everybody shows up. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to uh, the in studio show next week. So a great way that we can all help each other is by putting your information in the chat, and you put in your LinkedIn profile and all of your other information, but also if you can put in what a good ideal client would be for you, a good referral, um, that would be useful so that uh, if somebody is in, out networking and they run into somebody, they can refer you to the right person or the right person to you. There you go. Either way, tomato, tomato. Ooh, we're talking about Small Business Milwaukee now. We are. <laughs> we're talking about, uh, you could do that. There we go. I got cords dangling in off places that shouldn't be dangling off. Whew. All right, too much information. That sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> 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 um, Small Business Milwaukee has a number of events coming up. We have a book club on Wednesdays for the book, Think and Grow Rich. Uh, we've held this event three weeks in a row now. And it's become pretty popular. So I encourage anybody who's interested in learning more about that book 
to come and attend. And Kim also had and a- Kim just had her first breakfast breakfast club. Do you want to tell us about that event? Well, sure. Um, Yesterday, I had my very first in-person event in the Milwaukee area. It is um, business over breakfast. And a lot of breakfast events are at 730 in the morning. And this mom of two cannot make a 730 in the morning meeting because I have kids to get to school. So I thought if you can't find what you need, you create it. So I created it. And we had about 20 people show up for the first meeting. We had the room almost full. There's very few extra seats that'll be left. So if I end up having to find like another venue because we got bigger, that's amazing. Um, But even if not, I just, I love having people build relationships. So it was, it was great. I loved it. We meet again, April 4th, Oak Creek Diner. I can't wait to join you on April 4th, I'm going to block that day out and make sure that, uh, make sure that I make it. That sounds like a lot of fun. Excellent. Do they have biscuits and gravy? They did. That's actually what I had yesterday. Okay. I had a little half then, order of it. So you had me at biscuits. All right. Okay. <laughs> on March 31st, we also have a other event coming up, which is called the, uh, uh, what's it called? The grand opening (laughs) of the thing. There we go. The expansive grand openings on March 31st from four to seven. (laughs) And it's a great way to see what this great working space is all about, the different businesses that are here. And um, you can meet the mayor of Wauwatosa, kind of a big deal, you know, I don't know. Uh, So I think that would be very cool. Join us. I'm still struggling to remember that name, expansive. Yeah, you know. It just doesn't come as easy as serendipity did. I know, but we have to embrace embrace change. See that? I'm hugging change right there. Yes. Mm-hmm. We have to expand. Expand <laughs> and embrace. That seems kind of like opposite, right? Expand and embrace. Okay. Let it go. So, Tracy, you and have... the mayor of Tosa and the mayor of Franca. Oh, Both yes. of the mayors. Mayor podcast. I need to be the mayor of something. I don't know. We'll we'll have to work on that. You could so, be the mayor of video. Eh, doesn't have the ring. You know, podcast now sounds cool. Wawatosa. You go, what's a Wawatosa? Yeah, but video, eh, no. It's got to be better. We can do better, Tracy. I think we have enough brilliant minds in this group where we can figure that out. So Tracy, have you attended a course that you would like to share and what did you get out of it an online training or course or something like that the last course that i've attended was grant cardone's course Mm -hmm. (laughs) he's got a big course online he has a lot of video content and i just barreled through that as fast as i could and yes he does send a lot of emails and they call a lot too. I like listening to the calls because you can learn a lot from the, the they're hustlers, they're grinders. They're not gonna let you off the phone. Mm-hmm. They got a lot of good things. What's one takeaway that you got from the course or from learning from Grant Cardone? Uh, the one takeaway that I, well, there's a few takeaways, but the, the biggest one was he had a certificate at the end of every course. Mm. Did you print them out and put them on your wall? I did like the first two. Yeah. And then I thought nobody else is going to post these anywhere. And I could be kind of nerdy posting these on like my LinkedIn. Hmm. So I I didn't do that. We could put that in the chat. So if you think Tracy's a nerd, put it in the chat. Yes or no. for printing those out. (laughs) I'm going to go with a no. I think it's Because Grant Cardone, he's a, he's a, He's got a lot of education and smarts, but he's very abrasive. And I don't know if people would respond to that. Yeah, and salespeople, a lot of times those like sales mega stars are a little rough around the edges. And that's how they become great at sales is you got to be overly bold, overly confident. 
um, and I think overly aggressive. And that's just in my experience of seeing people who are in that space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, they have to get seen like everybody else. You have to get seen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that was the course that I've taken. What about you? Well, uh, I just took a course on sponsorship. I just sent you all that info uh, this weekend. Mm -hmm. And um, the observation that I have is that uh, we talked a little bit about courses last week during the Epic Networking event. And the one thing that I see is that uh, there's different types of courses. And a lot of times people want to make a course that's just I'm going to sit and convey knowledge to you like I'm going to teach you how to make this particular kind of post or or the sales technique or something like that. And I think those are useful and they were very popular five and 10 years ago. But I think the new um, new version is that people are doing a Zoom call or a webinar for 20 or 30 minutes and then just slapping it into a course. So I think that there's some different types of courses that you can make. And I really want to jump into that on Friday uh, in our Epic Networking event. Um, and for the next six weeks, we're going to do a course on how to make a course. And that's going to start on April something first, April 1st. That's April 1st, I think. Yep. And um, we're going to talk about how to make a course and how we can um, get it done. Because a lot, I know everybody out there is like, ah, oh, I'd love to make a course, whether it's a $29 course or a $229.95 course, which is you know $3,000 course. Um, everybody wants to make one. And I think one of the biggest challenges is people just think it's such a big task and so daunting, they never get started. So Tracy, you have talked about making a course briefly. You've kind of bounced in and out of it. What's your thoughts on making a course for you or what you teach? I think having a course would be beneficial for the people that follow Small Business Milwaukee. I think there'd be a lot of benefits for it. I think the part that I struggle with is the is the building all of it out before you actually start making the videos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a frame. Like it's like writing a book. Kind of, but you don't have to write. <laughs> actually, you don't have to write a book. You just have to write a chapter. And it can be a small chapter. So um, I'll give you a framework uh, in the in the epic event on Fridays and uh, we'll see how that works. Give it a whirl, right? So with that, we have another slide. Organization begins with awareness of what doesn't work for us. A organization begins with awareness of what doesn't work for us. Huh, I like that. I, I'm digging it, I'm digging That's it. That's pretty true. It is, it is. That's some good stuff right there. That's a juicy nugget and nobody owns it. So you could put your name on it and have a quote if you want anyone it's all yours it's all yours unknown uncopywritten this is great stuff so vitamins for the soul is our zen moment <laughs> our question is what they like to use uh what can, okay i have a question for the audience now that i figured out what the question is when you take a course, there's a couple of different kinds of courses. We're going to talk about two different ones. There's the webinar, which is somebody speaking for 30 minutes and then throwing it into a course. And then there's more of micro learning. Um, that's kind of my my background is micro learning is small uh, lessons, maybe two to five minutes long. Um, and the lessons make up a module and the modules make up a course. Those are two separate kinds of courses. In your experience, what have you seen that works really well? What do you like using? Um, the pros and cons of either. So Kim, you want to start us off? You're going to have me start you off. <laughs> All right. 
Um, I- I'm dead. Can you go to someone else right now? <laughs> I'm sorry. I am uh, kind of, you know. Absolutely. No. Kristen, Don't. do you do you take courses or um, do you have a preference? Yes, I do take courses, John, as well as teach courses uh, through my networking group. So this is what makes it a little bit unique is that it's networking as well as courses at the same time. So as far as taking courses, I think a lot of people, especially in the virtual world that we've moved to, prefer the module approach, meaning small bits and pieces of information. A lot of people I found have moved away from what I call the webinar uh, because we just check out if we're not involved in that learning, involved in that conversation. When we're listening to someone talk at us for an hour, I don't know about you. I have three kids myself. I do the dishes or I clean up the house or I do other things while I'm listening to that webinar and how much am I actually getting out of it? Where that five to seven minute little bit and pieces of information, think of your favorite podcast. Isn't that it? Like it's five to seven minutes. Maybe it's 20, but 20 is usually long. Funny enough, my podcasts are 20 minutes long, (laughs) (laughs) but they're conversations between people and you feel like you can get into that conversation. So Mm -hmm. as I was talking to you about, and we'll, we'll give a little commercial on this later when we talk about my group, but uh, what we've converted in our courses, we uh, have conversations like say around diversity, equity, inclusion, and we break it up into different topics. But instead of somebody talking at you, we have a conversation around those topics and learn from one another because of it, which I think makes it a little bit unique. Uh, And we have it like the Connect Show where it's live as well. I hope that helps. That does. Does anybody else, Debbie, have you taken any courses? Do you have a preference on courses? I, yeah, I actually have a course. I'm taking QuickBooks today at 11 o'clock. Um, so, uh, one of those softwares that I use for um, administration is forever having courses and webinars. <laughs> it's like, why, why do we have to keep changing so much stuff? Mm. So, I, yeah, I do them all the time. Um, not necessarily ones that I earn like certificates, but, you know, I have to obviously keep up with the trends mm. um, in the industry. If not, I will be behind. I like the certificate thing. I don't know. I would if if someone gave me a certificate, I would I would print it out. Yeah. Oh. I, oh. What do you mean? Yeah. I would wear wear it proudly. I just unfortunately they don't give me one. Yeah. They don't even give me a participation trophy. Nothing. <sighs> no tenth Losers. place trophy. Yeah. Uh, Mitch, do you have a, a preference? Are you? I don't know if you're if you're if you're live on courses. <laughs> Okay, well, with that, we can always jump into marketing moments with Kim. And I wish I had the thing for it. Boy, oh boy, that'd be great. Did you make a little thing for it? Oh, check it out. Oh. Oh my gosh, that's just Fantastic, John. I got to get to my right screen. So um, we're going to have a marketing moment as often as possible. Maybe every week, maybe not. You just have to tune in and find out. But we're looking like we're doing it every week. It's a new addition to the Connect Show. I'm really excited. I'm going to keep it brief, but I'm going to just give you guys a little bit of marketing tips, whether it be SEO, um, social media strategies, networking tips, which I already give a networking report. So I'll probably save those for then. But um, just a quick tidbit for your business or organization or helping you um, with being successful. So today's networking tip, um, we're going to talk a little bit about where your target audience might be. Do you, when you're doing your social media, are you 
reaching uh, reaching to the right target areas? Um, are you posting on the right platforms? And so I'm going to just give some statistics that um, I found online. YouTube has 81% and Facebook 69% are the most popular networks and are used consistently amongst all age groups. So um, a lot of the social media platforms might cater or be driven by one, one or more age groups. Those two are pretty consistent across the board. Um, Instagram, Pinterest, and LinkedIn are the next most popular. 18 to 29, if that's your age group, they love Instagram. Um, most at 71%, Snapchat at 65%, and TikTok at 48%. Side note, I think TikTok is going to blast these out of the water um, in the next year or so because it's just so popular. Um, top categories for TikTok, um, hashtag views include entertainment, dance, fitness, sport, home renovation, DIY, beauty, and fashion. So if your business falls within those um, categories, you should be on TikTok. And 59.2% of LinkedIn, LinkedIn users fall into the 25 to 35, 34-year-old age group. And 56% of those users are male. So the majority of Americans say they use YouTube and Facebook, um, but Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok are common among adults over 30. So who is your target audience and are you reaching them with the right social platform? Marketing moment for today. I do not hear John Taylor. Do you guys hear John or is it just me? We're not hearing you, John. I'm not hearing him either. There we go. He, he's got to okay. turn his microphone on. Jeez. There we go. So yeah. Are you using it? Um, Jesus, I tell you. Gee, oh, Bobby. Okay. <laughs> got a lot of stuff going, going on here. So Kim, where are you in your journey with TikTok? Are you starting to use it? Are you advanced user? Or? I am a viewer. I do not currently post on TikTok. I should. Mm -hmm. but I don't, I think even if I just gave a little marketing moment or a tip or something like that and put it on TikTok, you never know what could happen. Um, mm -hmm. so no, and I really look at it for like the cooking and the recipes, I just get inspiration. I don't look at it for business. That's my LinkedIn. I look at it for dance moves. How about you, Tracy? What do you do with TikTok? Anything? With, with TikTok? Yeah. Uh, I'm on TikTok a lot. <laughs> yeah. Probably an hour a day. I know that you said. And I'm studying it and learning about it. You send me a lot of useful information on our favorite show, and I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> um, did my other microphone. I do really on? think we should be. It sure did. Having the Connect show on TikTok. Yeah. It's going, it's going there. Cool. Well, we lost the microphone that you can hear me with because I stepped on I it. I can hear you. Okay, there we go. <laughs> You're just dropping things over there. You got cords oh, hanging out of places and... <laughs> it's just weird. Okay, we're just gonna go with it. Just lean into it and enjoy it, right? So with that, I have no idea where we are, Tracy, because we just went down a Ooh. whole bunch of stuff. We're on... We're on to our guest. Yeah, we're way down the down the, the thing here. Well, where are we going to put that networking report? We'll we'll stick it in somewhere. After our guest. Yes. Do you want to start with Jessen? Yes. Jessen Sorrells is the CEO and founder of HSCT Publishing and the senior principal of EJD Advisors, a boutique consulting firm focused on clients achieve actionable outcomes through providing critical advisory services in the areas of personal management and leadership development. So Jessen has a master's degree in conflict resolution reconciliation from Abilene Christian University in Abilene, Texas, and is a Texas state certified divorce and family mediator. Jessen has leveraged that background into a wide variety 
of public and private clients in a variety of economic sectors, ranging from long-term healthcare to public sector organizations. So with that, thank you, Jessen, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And your mic's not on, so give me one second. Now your mic's on, there we go. All right, can you hear me right now? Absolutely. Oops. Can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear us? I think it's a little bit delayed. Can you hear us? Yeah. So, Jessen, the question of the day is courses. Are you currently taking any courses? Do you work on any courses? And what's your preference of the webinar uh, type or the micro learning type? So our organization creates courses and course content for a wide variety of small and medium sized uh, business owners and managers and supervisors in their businesses. So we're deep in the course creation space. And what is your preference? Are you liking the um, the webinar, the 30 minute dumped into a, a learning platform or the small micro learning systems with the modules? So we do both. Um, we and we like both because there's different modalities that can deliver different pieces of engagement and content um, around leadership. Perfect. So what are the most effective things leaders do? The most effective things that leaders do is they build, they co-create, and they listen to their teams. They try to mold reality because leadership is an active act of engagement and leaders engage. That's what they do effectively. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that causes leaders to fail? Leaders fail when they fail to understand what the 12 rules of leadership are in order to be an intentional and effective leader. They fail in uh, managing conflict effectively. They fail in managing change effectively. And they fail in adapting to change, particularly in a post COVID era where we are really living in revolutionary times. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, um, things have really changed because of that. Mm -hmm. So, how can leaders succeed in the current disrupted business environment? It used to be that you had at least 20 years before a competitor would catch you. And now it's come down to, you only have about six weeks. <laughs> and what COVID did was it poured accelerant over all of that. And so in the current disruptive environment, leaders have to focus on building what we call anti-fragile teams. These are teams that can take a knock in a disruptive environment and continue to succeed and be malleable and adaptable to change. Mm -hmm. Um, what, how do you see the future? Like, I know that we don't, you know, you don't have a crystal ball, but what does the future look like is, um, are things slowing down, speeding up, you know, as far as leadership goes, what should we be thinking about as far as being a leader a year from now, five years from now? Well, you're right. I don't have a crystal ball. If I did, I probably could have predicted that Russell Wilson would have gone to the Denver Broncos. <laughs> And then Aaron Rodgers would have stayed at home in Green Bay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but since I don't have a crystal ball, I'll give you my best guess. And my best guess is this. 
over the next year, what we are going to see is more resignations, more resetting of the relationship between employers and employees and between organizations and the people they serve. Now, the massive disruption over the course of the next five years is probably going to be around artificial intelligence and machines and behavioral algorithms that already run so much of our lives leaping out into the larger public. This will cause leaders and force leaders to engage in what we call adaptive leadership. What, uh, mm -hmm. so you talked about AI uh, being part of the future of, of behaviors. Can you give us an example of how that would be used on a smaller scale and maybe small business? Or do you feel that it's going to be primarily in large business or enterprise level? No, I, I see it coming into small businesses as well. Mm -hmm. the, the, the fact of the matter is uh, algorithmic behavioral based leading and learning um, has filtered down into small and medium sized, small and medium sized businesses particularly in the space of course creation and of course networking. And so what leaders are going to have to do is they're going to have to understand, particularly in small business, analyze this across the enterprise mm -hmm. from how they hire personnel and how they place those personnel on teams all the way to how they spend their money. That's kind of scary. Yeah. I mean, and interesting at the same time. Yeah, it is. It's very interesting. It, it's going to be a challenging time. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, it, uh, and what I tell I can folks. See, there's almost going to be a divide, I think. Mm -hmm. There's going to be the business owners well, that are well, going to jump into that and then the ones that, are, that never do. Yeah, and the business owners, particularly in the small business space, who spend a lot of time focused on people and doing the things that only human beings can do and doubling down on those things will experience more success than the leaders and the businesses that run to do what all the big boys are doing and may win the short game in the beginning, but will lose the long game in the end. Yeah. Well, I, I really appreciate you you joining us today. Do you have a an offer? You you talk about making courses. Is there a way that our audience can reach out to you and learn more about your courses? Absolutely. If you want to know more about being a better leader in truly revolutionary times, even if you work in what is seemingly an innocuous place. <laughs> Check out our website, leadershiptoolbox.us. Leadership Toolbox. You can also check out our podcast. Mm -hmm. Yep, you can also check out our podcast, Leadership Lessons from the Great Books, because reading and understanding a great book is better than trying to understand yet another business book mm -hmm. to understand how to become a better leader. Do you have... Do you have Think and Grow Rich in your collection? Yes, I do. It's actually on the bookshelf right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, kind of a goofy question, and I, I'll own it. I'll lean into it, is, oh, there you go. Bill's thinking, <laughs> thinking and growing rich. Bill's got it. <laughs> so sidebar, I'll, I'll go back to my question. But sidebar, Tracy, your Think and Grow Rich book club is amazing. I love it. Uh, you, it's so inspirational and such a uh, uh, great conversation with everybody there. And um, it's really motivating me to, to, to read a little bit more. Like even when I'm really tired and 
I bought the 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 book with the smallest uh, text on it, and my eyes are no longer <laughs> 22 years old. They're like at least 27. Um, but uh, so <laughs> I need the glasses. But I, you know, it's a struggle to read it. But I I want to read more because of your because of your book club. So I appreciate that. Um, Jessen, my question for you. Well, they is, have tons of audios too. Yeah, I'm, I, and you know what was so interesting? This is another sidebar, Jessen. We're going to get right back to you in a minute. <laughs> oh, I'm enjoying this right here. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, someone on the call last week said something about the when you listen to it in audiobook, you get a different uh, a different take on it. You perspective. Get diff yeah, different perspective. Yeah, there you go. And because there's different inflections and you might not, you know, sometimes when I read, I'm kind of glazing over it. Um, so uh, I think, you know, hearing it, you know, I'm going to listen to it also. So I'm going to definitely, definitely work at it. Uh, and the Ray Kroc story. So I was told that Ray Kroc invented McDonald's and to find out that he didn't was that's like in the first chapter, so I'm not ruining the whole book. Anyways, my question for you, <laughs> Jessen, my goofy question of the day, how many books a year do you read? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's great. So with the podcast, I have exploded in my book reading. I used to read only 20 books a year. Oh, plumbing it. Now it's closer to 30 to 40. <laughs> Holy moly. How do you do that? So you read books the way you would read if you were going through an English literature class. So you divide it up into parts. You speed read a little bit. And then you go back and you read again. Hmm. So explain that process a little bit more. So you divide it up into parts. Mm -hmm. So you take a book and you divide it into how many parts? Typically, I will take a book and I'll divide it up into five parts. Mm -hmm. And that's just random <clears> by the <throat> chapters? Something like, yeah, chapters or themes. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you run through those themes very quickly. And I outline the books in order to talk about them on the podcast. Mm -hmm. And then I return and read through it more slowly to get the narrative and thematic so that I can have a conversation with somebody on the podcast about them effectively. So do you, you don't read every word of the, of the entire book. You're reading the basic concept and, and theme of it. Yes, absolutely. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some books I do treasure deeply, <laughs> like uh, Crime mm -hmm. and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky mm -hmm. or uh, Movable Feast by Ernest Hemingway. Mm-hmm. Uh, or anything by Jane Austen. And so I'm going to go in and I'm going to savor those books and savor those experiences. Mm. Um, that's, that's beautiful. How it, many, it, go ahead. It makes a difference when you have to show up with the information. So if you hold yourself accountable really to does. do the podcast about it, it motivates you to get it done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And so... This month on the podcast, we covered comic books and graphic novels. Hmm. And so we read things like Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns, hmm. right? Um, and we had interviews with comic book historians and illustrators. Hmm. And so these, this kind of content, uh, a, a little bit more challenging because there's obviously visuals involved with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, but it uh, certainly does change it up from business books. Yeah. And you know what? Leaders can learn from anything. And, and this is the reason why we took this approach. So it's not always heavy books. Uh, sometimes it's light things. But you can still learn something from something that appears to be light. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard uh, someone, I think we, t we said this last week about seasons. Sometimes you have seasons of, of business, seasons of learning, seasons of growth. Um, it doesn't all have to be, 
you know, Grant Cardone, because I think you'd go crazy. <laughs> so <laughs> you can do a you can do a short season of Grant Cardone and then do a little season of graphic novels and you know, season of it, Jane Austen and you know, be well rounded. Exactly. I really and do the like that word that season. We have... Sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. The conversations that we have with our guests are really quite fascinating. And so those are the people that really bring the juice to the game. And it's a two hour long podcast. So we're talking in depth about these leadership ideas and concepts. Mm. Hmm. I love it. I'm going to join that podcast. And what's the name of the podcast again? So the name of the podcast is the leadership lessons from the great books. You can find it on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and you can also listen to it in your browser on Facebook. Hmm. The new the new podcast thing in Facebook that's uh, that's a thing. Are you getting lots of lots of downloads, listens on that? It is actually driving a ton of our listenership. Hmm. Facebook podcasts. I saw that, and I know that we have to get on that because. My our podcasts and TikToks are two things where we can definitely improve on the Connect Show, uh, and uh, I'm going to work on that this week. Well, I'm not a TikToker, so don't feel bad. <laughs> it's uh, it's not really wired for me for a guy like me, right? <laughs> um, but we do uh, we really love the podcast, and it is our workhorse. Um, I believe we crossed a thousand downloads uh, just this weekend. Nice. Well, congratulations. That is an awesome milestone. Yep, thank you. That is fantastic. Uh, Justin, this was great. The whole book thing was just, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm stopping by Barnes and Noble on the way home. This will be great. <laughs> well, this month, the book we are ending with for this month, we're actually going to be recording this podcast today and releasing it next week, is Pinocchio by Carlo Collodi. Hmm. Oh. That one we're doing for kids. So it's a half hour podcast where we talk about Pinocchio and what kids can learn from Pinocchio. And it's more than just the lessons from the Disney movie. Mm -hmm. Well, that is fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us today. I, we really appreciate it. It was a great, great conversation. Yeah, thanks yeah, for letting thanks me connect so with you, John and Tracy, on The Connect Show. And thank you for joining me here, uh, all you folks in Milwaukee. And we will see you soon. All right. So, Tracy. We're off to our networking report. We are off to the networking report. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the networking report. I am Kim Knock, and today I have a special guest that I'm going to bring up with me. Her name is Kristen Gupta, and she has some pretty amazing events that she runs. And um, I'm just excited to have her talk with us a little bit today. Also, if John, and because you focus so much on leadership, our, um, our event is on leadership and course creation and all that kind of stuff. If you want to take a few extra minutes beyond the networking report, I'm happy to have you do that today. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. You have a beautiful setup. That's Thank gorgeous. you. It's gorgeous. We just did it this weekend and I'm really proud of it. So. Oh, <laughs> look at that. It is amazing. So, so happy to see that. I am inspired to get myself set up. I'm home for good now. So I need my, myself set in a beautiful space like well, that. Well, so at home is a great place to go for stuff. That's not too expensive. Great. Way. I'm going to uh, check it out. The paintings, the chairs, the little table in the back with the vases, they all came. Well, the paintings didn't, but the chairs and the table and the vases and that type of thing did. So awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your groups that you have going on? Um, Let's get this sure. party started. So I actually, I have two groups uh, that I run. One is called Defining Leaders. And this group is all about being in this together. Many of us are going through a lot of transition 
in our lives. Some of us might be switching jobs. Some of us might be looking to advance our careers. Many of us are facing this new world of work, especially those of us in highly professional positions. I work from home with three kids and it's spring break right now. So I'm surprised that we haven't been uh, interrupted or joined, let's call it, by any of my three right now. Uh, But we're facing this new world of work, but we are also at the same time moving from one generation, being the primary generation in charge of our businesses to a very different generation starting to take over And right now, most of our businesses are still built around the baby boomer generation leading. Uh, We're not built around a transitory generation, uh, which is very interesting, which changes how we view leadership, which changes how we view how we develop our people and all of these. So instead of getting leadership and training internally in our companies, which unfortunately for many of us doesn't exist, or there's just not enough of that training, we have our training in our events. So we have series around right now, diversity, equity, and inclusion. We've had series around uh, developing yourself as a leader. How do you become a leader uh, when you're not currently? Now we're all leaders in our day-to-day life, no matter what our title is. And that's one of the things that we talk about quite a bit. Uh, We're having our next series on working with multi-generations, so how to work with multiple generations, and we're having six sessions on how to master that, as well as communication and how communication has really changed. Uh, So that we host it weekly on Wednesdays at 12 noon. And one of the things that I find unique about this group is, uh, yes, I do believe that webinars are are there and they're great. And I also love podcasts and learning that way. I'm a voracious reader myself. We were just talking about reading. Uh, But I also believe that we learn a lot more when we're involved in the conversation, when we can participate in it. And so we don't have one person in our events come and talk at you. We throw out questions and the entire community is helping to answer those questions. And then we split into smaller groups of three to four to five people and we discuss that topic. So we walk away from with some real life learnings that we can put into practice right now instead of just learning some facts that we might not actually put into play. Like you, Tracy, with your uh, book club, when you're reading something and then you're also discussing what you're reading, you're getting so much more out of it than if you're just reading it by yourself, right? So that's the whole purpose of that group. Very, very similar in our authentic leadership community. I'm really excited about our next event, uh, which is all about engaging with the next generation and executive leaders. So we're bringing executive leadership specifically from the Milwaukee area together and the next generation. So students or young adults, but in a different way than you think, we're going to hear from those students and those young adults and what they're looking for in their next employer, because we're in a war on talent right now. And a lot of that war exists in this entry level or this one to two years of experience or right outside of school. And we need to be as employers attractive to those individuals, but also keep them. Why is there such a turnover when you're hiring the next generation? Sometimes it's because they're not finding what they're looking for Mm -hmm. in their employer. So we really want to set up a way for companies to connect with this generation and find out what's important to them in an employer. What's going to keep you here? What's going to keep you engaged uh, within what they do? And so I'm really excited about that one. We already have about 34 people registered and we're hoping for about 60. Wow. Great so, job with that. Yeah. That very absolutely much amazing. Yeah. So um, we talk a lot about networking and I like to ask anyone that, especially anyone that runs networking groups, I mean, you definitely have that collaborative mindset, which I love. And I believe that that's why you just get, you you get the group of people because that's the way to handle networking. If you ask me, just building those relationships, what is one, maybe number one, or even more than one tip that you would give to people about networking or, or attending any, any of these clubs? Uh, Well, if you're in transition uh, and you're looking to connect because you're in transition, like you're looking for your next career or you're looking for your next job, a book that I highly, highly recommend is the 20 minute networking meeting. Uh, It was actually written by a retained search recruiter. 
uh, who saw people that are at the executive level not know how to go out and network, not know how to meet people. Uh, but when you're attending something like the Connect Show, for example, or when you're attending another networking meeting, you have to be active. You have, have to actually participate. I heard from a lot of people, oh, I'm attending all of these networking meetings, but nothing's happening from it. But are you doing something with the connections that you're making? Are you actually taking it to the next level, setting up one-on-ones, following up with people, not with a quote or checking in, I'm still looking or something like that, but with something that's of value to them as well. And for me, my staying in touch was creating something like you said, Kim, with your breakfast meeting, if you don't see it, create it. And that's what I did with this is I created something to stay connected. I'm an executive recruiter by day. Uh, I feel like this is my like Batman role at night. (laughs) Let's call it that. Uh, But if you really want to connect with your network and you really want to truly network, you have to do it. Meaning You have to meet somebody and then set up a one-on-one just like you did, Kim, when you asked me to join the Connect Show or have something that's going to bring value to that person that you connect with them on. It's not just about you. It's about creating a relationship with those individuals, touching back with them and having something of value from your initial conversation, which takes work. It takes taking notes. It takes follow-up. It takes finding things that you think would be of value to them. Or when you have a conversation and you think of Kim, immediately send Kim that LinkedIn message and say, Kim, I thought of you. I talked to this person and I'd love to introduce the two of you. That makes Kim continue to think about you in the back of your mind. If you only attend like seven networking meetings a week, that's too much because it's too much work. You can't do all of the follow-ups that you need to, to really build those relationships off of that. So maybe choose the two to three that make the most sense for you and do the follow-up, do the legwork that's needed to really make those connections. I just, I have to highlight one thing you said, and you said it a few times, and this is for the people in the back. If you did not hear this, provide something of value to who you're connecting with. It's not about an instant sale for you. It's not about what you are going to get. What value are you going to provide to others? And it's going to bring it back home to you in the long run because you're providing value. Now they're thinking, I got to give her something of value. And it doesn't mean I'm going to pass a person off always, you know, I'm going to pass a tip off. Oh, I know you're really struggling with this aspect of leadership. Here's a little tip I want to give you or your job search, any of that kind of stuff. A lot of job searchers actually, Kim, think that they don't have something of value, Um, my authentic leadership community is a community of executive leaders, people that are in president, senior director, CFO level positions. In fact, briefly, a a CFO came into my connections from Harley Davidson. So not like small biz, always CFOs, although I love those too. I'm an individual contributor in my day job and I prefer to be. I I love being able to have the freedom to do what I want outside of that. And in order to do that, I need to have some time, right? And as an executive, you don't always have that time. But I love those executives in transition. They help me form my group. They help me come up with the ideas of what we're going to be talking about. They help me plan. And they also Mm -hmm. help me share this group with others. And I just want to tell you, if you are an executive in transition or you've ever you've ever been there, you have so much value that you can bring to the table to others with the connections that you can make for them, with the introductions that you can make, with your history. You have run businesses before, you've run organizations before, you bring so much value to the table that you don't even remember maybe. Uh, So don't forget that. Don't think just because I'm job hunting and I need help from others means you can't bring help to them at the same time. Gosh, you know, I, I see why your, your groups do so well. You are providing value all the time, no matter what it is, you're taking those segments, putting people together that belong together. Um, you know, and for an executive to, uh, to, uh, an employee might sometimes have some uncomfortable conversations, uncomfortable insights. So sometimes grouping those all together where they can have those uncomfortable conversations together, but then still be able to network with, uh, you know, everyone is great Mm -hmm. because you're teaching them something. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you so much, Kristen. I will put some links in the chat so you guys can find out all about Kristen and everything she has to offer. Um, I was so happy to be able to talk to you a little bit more today. You too, so, Kim. Yeah. Um, and, and with that, oh, John and I will be connecting in about two weeks, John. I'm excited about that because mm -hmm. There's so much that we don't do yet that we want to. I love the mayor of podcast town. I'm going to put in another plug for LZ. Uh, he's amazing. We actually have a podcast for both of our events now to get the word out there to those that can't attend live, but I'm excited to meet up with John to get some more ideas about how we can make some of what we do live as well. And John, you're excellent at this. So I love Yay. the way that you set this up. It's great. Connections, connections. It's exactly. great. Yep. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thank you. And um, one final thing that um, I have going on tomorrow, networking, Professional Women of Wisconsin is coming back to in person. We meet at 6 p.m. at the Brass Key in uh, Milwaukee on 43rd and Forest Home. Please come join us. Invite your friends. It's going to be a great group. And I'm done with networking today, guys. Are you ready to come back? I think we're ready. Do we do we look ready? I think you look ready. <laughs> and um, and we're the audio's working and this is it's so close. It's so close. I love it. <laughs> I love the marketing moment today. That was my favorite thing. What about you? I thought they were both good. Well, I like the marketing moment, but then I also like the book conversation. That was really good. Mm -hmm. uh and Kristen I don't know we've great. had some good content today yeah it was like Kristen was great I mean there was I mean it just you know there's a lot of there's a big gratitude list it's great so thanks to everyone for coming today we really appreciate you joining us on LinkedIn Zoom Facebook soon to be TikTok and the YouTubes TikTok TikTok I love it <laughs> <laughs> sorry and and did you tell them about friday's event uh yes friday's I, our networking event at 10 a.m yeah so our friday is our networking event at 10 a.m and we are going to be um shifting that into some hyper focused uh hands-on training interactive uh, make your life better system. And we're going to work on the name too. And what that will be is this week, we're going to have a, uh, uh, this, the next six weeks, we're going to talk about how to build a course. So in six weeks, we're going to start off with, I want to build a course. And after six weeks, you're going to be done and you're going to have a course done. Um, it's not that hard. It's mostly getting started. And you, for most people, they just need like a little framework or something to work with so that they can they can get started and make it happen right it's similar to like our turbocharged event of it that i have once a month yeah. we actually do something yesterday we talked about making a brand kit that is very useful and i think when you have mm -hmm. a brand kit it makes you look like the real deal mm -hmm. i think that's very very important. consistent yep and next week, we're going to have Melissa Etzler and Jonathan Heider for our last show on organization and course creation. And the next month, we're doing automation tools. Automation, the, the compound interest for your time. Um, that's mm -hmm. going to be a, a great, great session. Uh, thank and you. thanks to Expansive. And thanks to all of you uh, for showing up this week and helping us run this sh show smoothly. Thank you, Kim. Next week, we'll be knocking around some new ideas. <laughs> All I see yeah, what you did there. It's never going to stop. I got a bunch of them. I had to PG rating it, uh, but we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll have some fun with this. This will be great. And with that, our day is done. And thank you so much. Yep, thanks everybody for coming. <laughs> <laughs>